Today, we're going to be comparing The Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt on the PlayStation 4 and the Potato Masher. In case you don't know what the Potato Masher is, it is a $350 computer custom built in December of 2014 and designed to compete with the PlayStation 4 for the remainder of its life cycle. The goal is not to pick on consoles, but to instead show that PCs can be a very competitive alternative to a modern gaming console while staying within a console budget. A parts list and links to the full build video can be found in the description of this video, along with links to the high quality video download link in case you want a pixel peep. You can also click the box on screen to watch an FAQ video about the Potato Masher. This video was recorded and uploaded at 60 frames per second, so if your browser supports it, you should probably go ahead and switch over to that now. Now, let's look at The Witcher 3. Many people have requested a Witcher 3 comparison on the Potato Masher. Quite a few of those people believe that the Potato Masher will have a lot of trouble running the game, since the official RAM requirements are 6 gigabytes, which is 2 gigabytes more than we have. In the interest of transparency, I will be overlaying MSI Afterburner's performance monitor over this video so you can see how much of the GPU, CPU, and RAM the Potato Masher is using at any given point. This may be a little hard to see when I crop the video for certain comparisons, but hopefully it will still communicate the truth of the matter, which is that the Potato Masher did fine. I won't lie and say that it breezed through this game, because The Witcher 3 is very demanding on any system. However, the RAM usage stayed around 3.7 gigabytes most of the time, and even when it went all the way up to 4 gigabytes, the game still ran fine. The Witcher 3 handles RAM usage much better than some games that only officially require 4 gigabytes, like Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline. The PS4 version of Witcher 3 runs at 1080p and 30fps, so I set that as my target. Digital Foundry's excellent comparison videos have shown that the PS4 version of the game has severe and noticeable frame rate drops at times, so I wanted the Potato Masher to have a less compromised experience. Setting everything to high and leaving Nvidia Hairworks off, uh, a stable 30fps was very doable. Unless otherwise noted, the Potato Masher is running at high for this entire section. The Witcher 3 is an open world game, so the strain it puts on your system will vary quite a bit in different situations. Traveling through cities packed with people pushed the frame rate down to 27 or 28 FPS, but in the rest of the game world it never dropped below 30. Cities also pushed the RAM usage up fairly high, but like I said earlier, it still ran fine. Regardless of which system you play The Witcher 3 on, it's a very good looking game. There has been some controversy on the internet about the changing art style of the game during its development, but I think it's safe to say that this is the best looking open world RPG that's ever been made. The character models, facial animations, weather and lighting effects, and overall world design are great on both platforms. Nvidia has bragged a lot about its proprietary hairworks technology, which renders thousands of strands of free-flowing hair on Geralt, the local wildlife, and various monsters. Unlike AMD's proprietary TressFX technology, hairworks is extremely demanding on the system, reducing the frame rate by about 20%. If you want to maintain 30 FPS, you'll need to drop the rest of the game's settings down to medium. The hair does look nice, but you'll need to decide if it's worth the performance trade-off on your computer. It's hard to give a definitive edge to the PC version here. Even if Hairworks does look great, it's only a practical option for Nvidia users, so it's more of a nice luxury than a must-have feature. While a cursory glance at the visuals shows that the PC and PS4 versions of the game do appear to be very comparable, there are some worthwhile differences. To explain further, I've consulted the best graphics analyst I know, Dave the Not-So-Evil Evil Viking 13. Uh, Dave, what are the main differences between the Potato Masher and the PS4 running The Witcher 3? Well, Jeremiah, like you said, it is pretty close to parody, but as usual, the PC does offer a couple of extra bonus features. Hairworks is cool, but doesn't really apply here because it is just a huge amount of overhead. It's nice if you can afford it, but like you said, uh, not something that you should really shoot for unless you do have the overhead. What the PC does have is additional options for post-processing and some better mipmap texturing. And what that means is that you get higher resolution textures on foliage at a further distance from your player. So trees look nice even in that kind of blurry middle distance. Another nice feature here on PC is that with a bit more overhead on our graphics card, we can more easily maintain that 30 FPS, whereas both of the console versions of this game do have some, uh, some serious frame drops here and there. Another area of difference is going to be our textures here. Now, most of the textures are pretty close on both the PS4 and the PC, but I have noticed that there are some higher res textures on the PC version. Additionally, I think the PS4 version has a very aggressive depth of field uh, filter. That's kind of that 
camera blur. I think it's used to hide some of the pop-in and some of those blurrier mid-range textures on the consoles. What do you think, Jeremiah? Yeah, it seems like a pretty heavy post-processing effect. We're on the PC, it's very, very subtle, and actually a lot of people probably won't notice the difference. Uh, but on the PS4, I agree. It seems like they're using it uh, to camouflage some of the corners they've had to cut, which is actually very smart. Uh, it's a very oh, yeah, smart way sure. to keep the game looking good on lower-end hardware. Another very exciting thing in the graphics department for PC is how fast some patches have been coming out. We got uh, four patches, including the launch day patch in one week, that have added additional options for sharpening. It fixed those uh, foliage textures, and it's promised that we're going to get more and more stuff like that in the coming weeks. The developers want PC users to have just tons and tons of options for tweaking and optimizing the graphics. Thanks, Dave. Check his channel out by clicking the box on screen. So yes, the PS4 and Potato Masher look very comparable at 1080p and 30fps. Gaming on a PC is about having choices though, so let's see if we can push it a little farther. One of the holy grails of PC gaming is the ability to play games at 60 plus frames per second. For some reason, the PC version of The Witcher 3 seems to have trouble scaling up to 60fps unless you have very nice hardware. While lowering the settings to medium at 1080p yielded 40 to 50 FPS, Potato Masher could not reach a stable 60 FPS at 1080p even on the lowest settings. I was able to get close, but the game stayed in the mid 50s most of the time. Dropping the resolution down to 720p and settings to low made 60 FPS more consistent, but doing that makes the game look quite a bit worse, and to be honest, I don't think it's worth it. The resolution definitely affects the frame rate, but not as much as some other settings like foliage and shadows. Manually tweaking the game files to reduce these settings past their normal options might yield 60 FPS at 1080p, but I try to compare the out-of-the-box experience for games without resorting to mods or other advanced changes. Fortunately, the game does play very well at 30 FPS, but it's a little disappointing that 60 FPS wasn't more easily achievable. I do think that 45 FPS at 1080p is a nice compromise that lets you enjoy a higher frame rate without sacrificing too much visually. Okay, so maybe the Potato Masher can't play the game at 60 FPS very well. How about 1440p? Well, yes it can. At medium settings, the game stays fairly consistently around 30 FPS. The added resolution makes the game look very nice and most noticeably increases the quality of the character models and foliage. The frame rate does dip more often than it does at 1080p, so if you want a more solid experience, you'll need to drop it down to low settings. This introduces much more pop-in and other graphical shortcuts, but the frame rate is stable. Personally, I'd take 1440p medium settings since the frame rate drops aren't very extreme or distracting. Either way, the Potato Masher is definitely pushed very hard at 1440p. You may have already guessed this, but 4K is not an option. The game simply requires too much from the GPU and the Potato Masher can't keep up. If you don't mind 20 FPS, sure, play at 4K. Personally, I would rather not. As a point of comparison, here's the 720p 60fps footage from earlier shown to scale. Here's 1080p on high settings. Bumping up to 1440p medium, you can see how the amount of pixels being pushed is rapidly increasing. Lastly, 4K is so large that it's obvious why the Potato Masher can't manage that resolution smoothly. This budget computer is best left to 1080p and maybe 1440p. Going into this comparison, I was definitely nervous that the Potato Masher would struggle. I knew The Witcher 3 was going to be a very demanding game, and while consoles can have their settings reduced to whatever level the developers think is best, PC gamers are mostly left with the in-game options to get the game running smoothly. Nevertheless, the Potato Masher looked a bit better and ran quite a bit smoother than the PlayStation 4 version. 4K isn't possible, but 1440p is definitely achievable with a little patience. Overall, the Potato Masher held its own, and I'm pretty happy with the results. If you have any questions, check out the FAQ video or write into casualshenanigans at gmail.com and we might answer your question on the podcast. Make sure to look at the original build video and have a great day.